Hello again and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to take part three of the real exam, of the real listening exam myself. Please have it printed out and take it with me. Hi again, Hossein here. In this video, I'm going to take part three of the real exam myself. So, unlike other tests, this test, the type of question you can find here is not multiple choice items. The multiple choice items are in section four of this test. And I'm going to go for the standard method, okay? And I'm going to test that not very standard method in video nine uh, with the second practice test. So take it very carefully with me. All right, everybody, here we are, part three of the exam, of the listening exam. And this is uh, gap fill questions. This is the gap fill type, uh, 10 questions. Uh, they will give us, I, will, I, I think they will probably give us some time here uh, to read the options. So, and the instruction says no more than three words. Well, no more than three words for each answer. Okay, let me just play it. Section 3. You will hear a conversation between a tutor and two students who are preparing for an English literature test. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 24. Okay, the name of the novel, protagonist, the main character in the story, Mary Illinois Carmen, time period early in, I don't know, in the romantic, in the romantic era, maybe. And Mary moves to UK, Miss Colin, who thinks he will never be able to. Okay, they become friends. Listen carefully and un I, I pause it, I give myself a little more time, okay, because this is practice, because this, I don't want to compete with myself. I want to improve my score, okay. Uh, point of view, omniscient. Omniscient means all-knowing. Um, a, a narrator that knows everything about all the characters in the story. Narrating. Okay, yeah, <laughs> that's that's for, that's what I just told you. Uh, feelings, opinions, and something. Sensibilities, maybe. Answer questions twenty-one to twenty-four. Hello, Lorna, Ian. Glad you could make it. You're the only two who put your names down for this literature tutorial, so let's get started, shall we? I want to run over some aspects of the novel The Secret Garden with you before the test next week. Be sure to take some notes and ask questions if you need to. Hey Lorna, have you got a spare pen? Sure, here you are. OK, so the story follows two key characters. You should refer to them as protagonists, who go by the names of Mary Lennox and Colin Craven. The story is set shortly after the turn of the 20th century, and the narrative tracks the development of the protagonists as they learn to overcome their own personal troubles together. That's quite a common storyline, isn't it? Yes, you're right, Lorna. So what can you tell me about the character of Mary? Well... In the beginning, she is an angry, rude child who was orphaned after a cholera outbreak and forced to leave India and move to the United Kingdom to her uncle's house in Yorkshire. That's right. And there she meets Colin, who spends his days in an isolated room, believing himself to be permanently crippled, with no hope of ever gaining the ability to walk. The two strike up a friendship and gradually learn, by encouraging each other, that they can both become healthy, happy and fulfilled in life. Will we need to remember a lot of these details for the exam? Just the basic outline. Examiners don't want to read a plot summary. They know what the book is about. Focus on narrative techniques instead, such as point of view. What's that mean? It's all about how we see the story. This story, for example, is written from the perspective of what is called an omniscient narrator. Omniscient means all-knowing. So, as readers, we get to see how all the characters feel about things, what they like and don't like, and what their motivations are in the story. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 25 to 30. OK. So this is motivations, okay? What their motivations are. Now, okay, I'm going to go on and continue. 
Uh, audience, good for children. Audience, story simple to follow. Symbols, visualizations that we present. Oh, oh, something I just forgot to, 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 to tell you here. Cholera, cholera outbreak. It's a disease. Uh, there is a nice story by, I think, Gabriel Garcia Marquez. Love in the time of cholera. It's a very nice story. Uh, visual items that represent symbols, welcome items that represent, I don't know, the robin red breast. So these are the symbols. Do you see this column here? Symbols that represent something. One of the symbols is this, one of them is this. So it, it follows this one. I have to read everything. Okay, don't jump from that one to this one. The portrait of Mr. Scraven. Don't jump from this to this. Read everything here. Um, motives, patterns in the story, the Garden of Eden, secrecy, metaphorical, and little transition from secrecy. So, motives. So, there are two motives here. Uh, the Garden of Eden, secrecy, metaphorical, little transition from. Okay. Uh, themes, so other audience, symbols, motives, and themes. Themes means like the general story, what, what that is about, connection between this and this, and outlook, and well being, and the visuals, and the need for. Okay, let's move on. Now listen and answer questions 25 to 30. Won't it be hard to write a technical analysis? After all, it's a kid's book. Well, it was initially pitched at adults, you know. But over the years, it has become seen as a more youth-orientated work. And you're right in a sense. The simple vocabulary and absence of foreshadowing make the story very easy to follow and ideally suited for children. But that doesn't mean there isn't much to analyse. Look at the symbolism, for instance. Symbols are things, right? Material things like objects that stand for abstract ideas. Absolutely, yes. And the author uses many of them. There's the robin redbreast, for example, which symbolises the wise and gentle nature that Mary will soon adopt. Note that the robin is described as not at all like the birds in India. Roses are used as well as a personal symbol for Mistress Craven. You'll see they're always mentioned alongside her name. And Mistress Craven's portrait can also be interpreted as a symbol of her spirit. Are symbols just another name for motifs? No. Motifs are a bit different. They don't have as direct a connection with something the way that a symbol does. Motifs are simply recurring elements of the story that support the mood. Are there any in this novel? Yes, two very important ones. The Garden of Eden is a motif. It comes up a few times in connection with the garden of the story. And then you've got the role that secrets play in the story. In the beginning, everything is steeped in secrecy, and slowly the characters share their secrets, and in the process, move from darkness to lightness, metaphorically. But also, in the case of Colin, quite literally. His room in the beginning has the curtains drawn, and he appears at the end in the brightness of the garden. Anything else we need to know about? Yes. Nearly all novels explore universal concepts that everyone has experienced. Things like love, family, loneliness, friendship. These are called themes. The Secret Garden has a few themes that all centre on the idea of connections. The novel explores, for example, the way that health can determine and be determined by our outlook on life. As Colin's health improves, so too do his perceptions of his strength and possibility. The author also examines the link between our environment and our physical and emotional prosperity. The dark, cramped rooms of the manor house stifle the development of our protagonists. The garden and natural environments allow them to blossom, just as the flowers do. Finally, this book looks at connections between individuals, namely Mary and Colin. This necessity of human companionship is the novel's most significant theme, because none of their development as individuals would have occurred without their knowing each other. 
Well, that about sums it up, I think. That's a great help. Thanks. Yes, thanks very much. That is the end of section three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. All right, everybody. Okay, that's it. That was pretty easy. Now let's check the answers together. Okay, the first one is the secret garden. So capital, capital, because this is a proper noun. It's a proper name. Don't forget it. Twentieth century. Yes, that's it. Twentieth century. Uh, walk. Yes, motivations. Motivations. Uh, abstract ideas, abstract ideas, not idea, okay, represent abstract ideas, and roses, yes, plural S, uh, 27 darkness to lightness, yes, darkness to lightness, that's right, and health, and outlook, yes, that's it, that's correct, environment, and environment, the mind is spelling, okay, environment, many people don't write this in here environment like government yeah government okay so that is very important environment uh and we should make for human companionship human companionship yeah that's it okay. thank you everyone for taking this test with me if you have any questions about any parts of the exam, please leave them in the comments and I will get back to you as soon as I can. And don't forget to like and share this video with your friends and subscribe to my channel for more videos. Thank you.